Shaft, part 83. In case you don't know who Dan Schneider is, he was a TV show producer who was responsible for popular shows such as iCarly, Zoe 101, Victorious, and Drake and Josh to name a few. But he is mostly known for being a creep, and here's just one example. Miranda was celebrating her 18th birthday on set, and here you can see she tries to avoid Dan by stepping back. Pay attention to how he holds her and hugs her. You can clearly see how uncomfortable Miranda looks. Here he What's up, Seekers? Welcome back to the channel, man. If you guys are brand new here, man, if you guys don't know what we do is, we break down scary and creepy videos, man, on the net, on the web, from YouTube videos to IG videos to TikTok videos to Facebook videos, man. Anything weird, usually unexplained, you can find right here on this channel. Just want to thank the Seekers, man, who's been tapping in with us, man, subbing up to the channel. Greatly appreciate that, man. Like I said, starting a new series. Hopefully, you guys um, mess with it and you guys enjoy it. I still we do best seekers. <laughs> I seek the truth. Committed the ultimate act of betrayal. Leaving your baby terrified, alone, unprotected, to suffer what I heard was the most gruesome death imaginable. If you haven't heard about this case yet, consider yourself lucky because it is so sad and disturbing. In June of 2023, this mother left her toddler alone in her house while she went on vacation. 16-month-old Jalen was left alone in the house for 10 days while her mother went to Detroit and Puerto Rico. When she arrived back home, Jalen was no longer breathing, so she called police. Jalen's cause of death was dehydration and starvation. And recently, she was sentenced to life in prison with no possibility of parole and this this is what she had to say. Mm. Candelario spoke through a translator saying both God and her daughter have forgiven her for what happened. I'm gonna ruin your childhood. I don't, I don't know about that one, Seekers. She chose to go to freaking Detroit and Puerto Rico over choosing over to take care of her freaking her kid. Like who would do something like that, man? Like you're just gonna leave your child to fend for herself. I mean, she's a baby. She knows she can't fend for her freaking self, man. Seekers, bro. What we going through these people's heads, man, when they be doing these acts, bro? It's like they don't think about the consequences, man. And that translator said that how she said her daughter and God forgave her. I mean, that's what she said. I don't know. I don't know. That's up to whatever, I guess, her interpretation that the situation would happen, man. But it just goes to show you, bro. This world, it's a messed up place, man. Part 83. In case you don't know who Dan Schneider is, he was a TV show producer who was responsible for popular shows such as iCarly, Zoe 101, Victorious, and Drake and Josh, to name a few. But mm. he is mostly known for being a creep, and here's just one example. Miranda was celebrating her 18th birthday on set, and here you can see she tries to avoid Dan by stepping back. Pay attention to how he holds her and hugs her. You can clearly see how uncomfortable Miranda looks. Here he looks down at her and she slowly starts to step away from him. There has been a lot of stuff about coming out about Dan Snyder recently. Um, you guys know, I guess, that series called The Quiet um, on set or something like that. It just, I guess they were just exposing everything that was going on. I guess the dark, you know, the secrets about childhood um, in Hollywood. It's the freaking main culprit, man. How he was, but they said he was doing some weird stuff, and how I've heard he was like been obsessed with feet or something like that. It's just freaking crazy, but it's like all these shows that we grew up watching, man. We didn't know like the dark history behind it. Like it brought joy to so many people, man, but it affected so many of those young, the young kids' lives, man. It'll never be the same. It's like now when you watch those shows, you, you can't even you can't even look at it look at it the same because of all the information you know man see because what do you guys think about dan snyder bro we're going to dig deep into that one because that's that one hit different because that was my childhood and and sing this little song run rabbit run rabbit run 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 rabbit run rabbit run Hmm. Boogeyman in London?
Something you don't want to mess with. Dark energy. His mother was found beaten to death 12 hours after calling the police for help. Mackenzie Hopkins was a 24-year-old mother from Missouri. She had a beautiful four-year-old daughter and was a really good mom. She was described by her loved ones as being one of the most positive forces in their life. They called her a ray of sunshine who couldn't help but brighten every life she touched. Mm. On the 15th of January, Mackenzie's dad phoned police and asked them to do a welfare check for her. What happened next is unimaginable. Officers arrived to her home in Kansas City along with her dad. When they opened the door, they saw pools of blood and drag marks. There were also several bloody shoe prints. Mackenzie was found deceased, submerged in the bath. Mm. She had received a fatal beating. Her child was also found at the scene with a head trauma but miraculously survived. She was rushed to hospital but thankfully made a full recovery. Tragically, it was revealed that Mackenzie had used her phone to try and bring police for help. The dispatcher apparently heard people arguing on the other end of the phone. Seemingly, no police were dispatched to the area. Investigators were able to determine that the shoe prints found at the scene matched her friend's boyfriend's shoes. This was Jose mm. Escalante Corchado. His car was also spotted nearby and he was captured on CCTV running away from the scene. Now the friend had actually told Jose, who was her boyfriend, that she was staying with Mackenzie that night, but that was in fact a lie. Mm. She had just been saying that she was staying with Mackenzie so that she could go out without any questions. Jose obviously turned up to Mackenzie's house and his girlfriend was not there. He pleaded guilty to murder and has been sentenced to 30 years in prison. Seekers, man, that case, you guys heard about the set the dispatchers. There's an opponent that sent them by the man. I'm telling you, man, it's like well, one person doesn't do the job. It's a ripple effect. Like, the small actions, man, you never know where that can make or break in somebody's life. They need to freaking, I guess, they should investigate that dispatcher who didn't send somebody out. Well, because she said she had them on the phone, heard them arguing, but there was no, the, the, the police didn't send nobody? It's weird. Very weird seekers. This is a ghost story that actually happened to one of you guys. Huh. So Jenny grew up in an old country farmhouse in the middle of nowhere. And in that house, there was this spooky looking vent that went straight up to a room that no one in the house used. So one day, when Jenny's around four years old, she starts hearing a man's voice coming from the vent calling to her. She doesn't know any better, so she starts talking back to the voice who's mm -hmm. asking her questions about herself. But here's the crazy thing. Prior to this happening, Jenny's uncle had taken his life. And Jenny claims that the voice coming from the vent sounded exactly like his. Jenny asks the man where he is, and he says that he's in a room that she can't see. Mm. So she runs up to the abandoned room, but there's no one inside. Is this supernatural or was there really a grown man upstairs talking to a child? We talk about this and another ghost story on the Haunted Houses episode of my podcast. Secret, what do you guys think? Facts or fiction? The Darkest Conspiracy Theories, part two. The Bohemian <laughs> Grove Club. The Bohemian Grove mm. Club is a place located in the woods of California. It is a club filled with the world's most powerful people and the world's wealthiest. It has around 2,600 members. Damn. I'm talking politicians, actors, artists, presidents, writers, mostly anyone with a big name that possesses a lot of power. And there's still a huge waiting list of powerful people waiting to join. Each year they meet up to discuss what's going to happen next to them. J.P. Morgan was a part of this club, Clint Eastwood, and even Ronald Reagan. It's more like a cult than a club. People like Albert Einstein and Robert Oppenheimer even discussed the Manhattan Project there, which led to the world's first atomic bomb, taking the lives of millions of people. When it goes down, they worship an ancient owl god statue in which they give fake sacrifices to. Yeah, they make a human shape out of sticks and twigs and put it in the fire. Okay. My only question is, what other huge world events are being discussed and planned as we speak? Mm. Most terrifying? Seekers. Should we dive deep into that, man? Because that one sounds insane, bro. All those powerful people meeting up, bro. They said, 
I have Einstein, or Oppenheimer was there, they discussed the Manhattan Project, we know what turned out from that. That's scary, bro. That those people like that are meeting up, talking, discussing what's gonna happen next in the world, man. You guys know that, that's probably happening, bro. All over the world, powerful people meeting up, talking about what's gonna happen next, because they have that much power to influence. That's why we always have to be aware seekers. Should we dive deep into that one, man? So to you guys. Urban legends from around the world. Once there were three teenagers who broke into an abandoned amusement park in Canada. Two of them went inside first while the third waited outside. But after a while, the two who went inside first still hadn't come out. So the one left waiting decided to go inside as well to find his friends. That's when he found one of his missing friend's phones lying on the ground. And in the camera roll, he saw something terrifying. On his friend's phone, he saw a photo of a strange door with a huge mouth inside. That turned out to be the urban legend of the Smile Room. A giant creature that manifests itself as a fake room with the door to lure its victims in. It can move to different locations and disguise itself as a normal looking door. So mm. once you walk in, it'll devour you. So remember the next time you see a door in an unusual place, don't go near it. And follow for more stories. One of the suspects in the case of the dismembered body parts found on Long Island is back in jail on new charges. Huh? In case you missed it, over the last month, the dismembered bodies of two victims were found in several locations on Long Island. Last week, the victims were identified as 59-year-old Donna Connolly and her partner, 53-year-old Malcolm Craig Brown. Hmm. They had been in a relationship for at least the past seven years. Four people were originally arrested and charged with first-degree hindering prosecution, tampering with physical evidence, and concealment of a human corpse. Stephen Brown, Jeffrey Mackey, Amanda Wallace, and Alexis Nieves were released on bail after they were arrested and charged. Hmm? They were released with GPS ankle monitors. But earlier this week, Amanda Wallace was arrested again after she stole beauty items from a CVS on the evening of March 15th. During this, she allegedly acknowledged to a police officer that she had stolen eyelashes and nail polish, claiming to have forgotten her money and that she really didn't feel like going back to get it. Mm -hmm. Suffolk County prosecutors say they have video evidence of her stealing the item, and she was also wearing that GPS monitor as a condition of her bail. The prosecutor in the case has also said that Wallace has shown a tendency to rely on theft to support herself, and even that the homicide investigation has revealed that she may have stolen items that were used in the dismemberment. Part of the conditions of her initial release had been that she avoided getting in trouble again. So prosecutors argued that because she violated the terms of her release, she should be held without bail. The judge set bail at $5,000, but her attorney explained that even if she posted bail, it would not make a difference as she was remanded in the human remains case for mm. violating her release terms. So she remains in jail. The other defendants remain out of jail with their GPS ankle monitors until they are going to be back in court next week. There's still been no charges filed related to the actual murder of the victim. So the investigation is ongoing, and if there's evidence found, they will be charged. This is sent Seekers, bro. I'm telling you, man. People who do acts like that, they truly don't think. You're already in trouble for, like, one major case, and you decide... I'm going to do another crime with a freaking GPS ankle monitor. That's like the first time I've heard of it. You're going to do a crime with a GPS ankle monitor. Like, did you think you was going to get away with that? <laughs> they could try, they could try, so even if you try to deny it, they could try that. They're going to say you was there at the store, so there's no way you could deny it. Like, they truly don't think about the actions, man, when they be going through with that. Now look what happened, bro. That's just freaking... It always amazes me how people like that, they never truly seem to think. To be the real tomb of La Llorona, you can visit. Mm. There are many versions regarding the legend of La Llorona. Without being really certain that her tomb exists, there are some that claim that her remains can be found in Guanajuato. 
Locals say that a woman's soul appeared at night, and when they warned their friends or family of this spirit, they disappeared or died. And that a woman's cries could be heard when a spirit was around. They also say that the torment ended when they placed a plaque where her spirit would usually roam, leading them to believe that this is where her remains are located. And they have since said that it is the location of La Llorona's tomb. And it was only when missionaries blessed this grave that the cries stopped. La Llorona no longer appeared. Mm. You can visit, but you must get permission because it is on a private residence. It is found at Hacienda Siete Reales, and you can locate it on Google Maps. Would you visit the tomb of La Llorona? No. I mean. Is that a boar? Unfortunately, we are at a point in time where if you use a public restroom, you need to check right-in cameras. These cameras are getting smaller, cheaper, and more undetectable by the average person. Mm -hmm. There was a recent incidence of this at a San Jose Starbucks. On January 31st, a plumber was working on the sink of that bathroom when he noticed something odd. It turned out to be a tiny hidden camera pointed directly at the toilet. Authorities said the videos are extremely graphic and they've counted 91 victims. Their ages range from 4 to 85 years old. And all of this was recorded on one day. Fortunately, they tracked down the man behind it a couple weeks later. 35-year-old Louis Juarez Jr., who has children, by the way. When they searched his home, they also found 20 firearms, high-capacity magazines, and more tiny cameras. This guy wasn't a Starbucks worker. He just walked in and easily placed a hidden camera in the bathroom. And with most hidden cameras nowadays, all you need is a Wi-Fi connection to access and download these videos, like the free Starbucks Wi-Fi. If a plumber didn't catch this the very next day after you placed it, this guy could have been recording hundreds of people every day for who knows how long. That makes me skeptical about freaking using public bathroom now, right now. I'd be paranoid. I'm gonna try to have to check, man, make sure there's freaking no mini cameras, but like she said, they're getting smaller and smaller, man, so it's kind of like hard to detect. Yeah, all that freaking access to all those footages. And here, yeah, here, all those freaking firearm weapons at home, where that could have led to something else even more sinister. See, because I know it's, I always say this, but it's true, like, we gotta be aware, bro. Tell me that down below, man. If you guys gonna be checking out, bro, when y'all use your freaking bathrooms down, bro. Check. I guess before you use it, man. It's sad that we have to do this, but that's the reality we live in. I'm gonna ruin your childhood, part 77. In the movie Cars, there's one adult joke you definitely missed as a kid. Hmm. Right after Lightning McQueen wins a race, his biggest fans Mia and Tia flash their headlights at him. But do you get it? They are literally flashing him after he wins a race. And as he looks at their headlights, he says, I love being me. What? I never even noticed that now, bro. I'm telling you, bro, man, the more you look back on your childhood, bro, these these jokes they be putting in, man, you don't get the true message until you're freaking older. So they were like flashing their, you know, I guess they freaking, they were flashing them out there with the race. I never even thought about it like that. I always used to think when I was a kid, I said, why? I said, they just showing their lights. Like, what the, what does that mean? Seekers. Man, we seeking the truth, bro. It's, it's exposing our childhood, man. You know he's in there for a fact. I know for a fact. Oh, yeah. You can kick your door. Can you I kick it in? I swear to God, go ahead. Please. Oh, just, just, I don't know what's wrong with this girl. Oh, there's a girl in there with him? Yes. I bet. Mm -hmm. There's a girl in there. She's very slow and slim. My husband said he didn't really get a look at her. But he's mm -hmm. yelling at her. Uh, you know, 100%, you know, 100% there, I know 100%. You know 100%. William, this is Jack and Police Department. This is your last chance. Your hands up. What the hell? Hey, 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 that way. Just keep coming. Watch your step. Right there. Mm. You get that? Okay, right, what do you need to get down? Thompson? How far away is that? 
Why don't you have a sit right see right there? Why don't you have a sit right see right there on this? Yeah. Why don't you just sit down there? Is there any weapons or anything up there? No. Oh, God, God damn garage, bro. What the hell? And the wife, she gave her up, yeah, because she knew something was going on. You, you talk, she said, no, I know for 100% that somebody's in there. She knew her husband was up to freaking no good. Like, I don't know if he was being there doing something to us. Like, bro, like, you see her eyes and face, they look like it's swollen. It's crazy, man, how people can do that to, like, another human being. We're going to have to dive deeper into that story sequence. But they're just touching her. What can't you say? I mean, honest to God, she I looks know uncomfortable, man. We've seen this before. About Miranda, but I know time permits, and I will consolidate it to just this one thing. In all the years I've known Miranda, I guess nine years now, she hasn't changed. Miranda hasn't changed one bit. All those mm -hmm. awesome qualities that she had when she was nine years old. All the goodness, all those smiles. All Let me know if I'm overreacting. And make sure you hit that follow button because I have a whole deep dive coming. These are the most unusual deaths so. you will ever hear about, and some of these are mind blowing. Up first is Kirk Godell, and he was an Australian American mathematician who developed an obsessive fear of being poisoned, and he then refused to eat food prepared by anyone but his wife. But when his wife became ill and was hospitalized, he starved to death because he didn't eat any food from anybody else. Next, a 26-year-old man from New Hampshire had a very bad case of snoring. So he attempted to cure his snoring by inserting tampons into his nostrils. He then died from suffocation in his sleep from the tampons and with sleeping pills adding to his breathing difficulties. Next, a doctor from Houston, Texas named Hitoshi Nikaido was killed after his head was trapped in elevator doors at the hospital he worked at. Ooh. He was partially decapitated as the elevator ascended, and he also sustained injuries to his ribs and spine. Mm. There was also reports that he was a little drunk too, but it's not confirmed. Next, 21-year-old Josh Hutcherson was driving home drunk with his 23-year-old friend Francis Bromes, who was pictured here. Mm -hmm. Francis was hanging out the passenger window while vomiting due to having car sickness at the time. Josh then drove off the road and sideswiped a telephone pole support wire, completely decapitating Francis. Josh then continued driving the final 12 miles to his home in Atlanta. He then parked his car in the driveway and went to bed. A neighbor then found Francis's headless body in the truck the next morning. If you've ever seen the movie Hereditary, then you remember the pole scene. Well, that pole scene was actually inspired by this gruesome death. Tell you, man, these movies and stories, but they be inspired by some dark thing seekers. <sighs> Never ceases to amaze me, bro. Medical got there, they started cutting his, cutting the stuff off him, and then you can see like the, the dark around his ankles, and it, mm. it you can smell it, the, the flesh. Ruby Frankie's son had escaped from the home and went to a neighbor's house asking for help. That's when neighbors noticed how frail and dirty he looked. He mm. also had duct tape on his ankles. When first responders removed it, they said it had a bad smell to it. This is even worse than we had imagined. One of the first responders even started to cry after seeing his wounds. <laughs> Ruby Frankie and Jody Hildebrandt were responsible for what these kids had to go through. Both of them were convicted and sentenced. They could serve anywhere up to 30 years in prison. This father killed his son. You saw like how it freaking affected that, you know, that person that was there in the crime scene, bro. Like it was that bad that she like had to step away because she, like she said, she was about to freaking cry, bro. Tell you, man. But it was like, they said it was so bad that the, that the police, they could actually smell it, man. You know how freaking bad it has to be? 
Seekers, bro. What the hell was going on? What possessed them to even do something like that to that kid, bro? All these cases, man. We gotta, we have to dive deep, bro. If we wanna find out the truth. Hey, man. You guys can do it with me and share it in the comments, man. What you guys found. We, we can stay connected there. Go the baseball bat and just listen to the 911 call. On March 25th, 2021, Matthew Ponomarico, who is 34, called 911 from his home in Ohio to say that he had killed his five-year-old son, Jax. He said that he killed his son with the baseball bat because he was hearing voices. Now, more than two years later, he pleaded guilty to the crime and was sentenced to life in prison. Mm. He will be eligible for parole after spending 45 years behind bars. Now, what I'm about to show you is a 911 call Matthew made just after he murdered his son with the baseball bat. And this is a massive trigger warning. I just killed my son. What do you mean you just killed your son? I'm hearing voices. Oh, I'm hearing voices. Oh, okay. Well, I'm going to get you out of here. Oh, you know what? Where's your son now? He's dead. Dead where? with a phone out there hand what he did and them having to keep repeating the question over and over again you couldn't even freaking answer when did it happen when did it happen he said because he heard voices in this area man I can see I couldn't do a job like that man like you have to be on the phone with a person that's acting like that and like they have to stay calm because they don't want because they have to freaking get all this information you can hear like the freaking typing in the background it's like eerie sound bro some out of a damn like movie or something. Seekers. We live in a dark world, man. That's why we just gotta try to be freaking nice to each other. Of the murder of a teenager who was shot in Merseyside. On the 7th of April 2020, mm. in Sefton, Merseyside, a distressed call came into the police. It was the younger brother of 20 year old Mikey Rainsford. He stated, My brother's just been shot. He then explains that we don't even know if we're safe and can be heard shouting, Mike, wake up. Mikey's brother Josh and his dad had been watching TV. Mikey returned home that night at about 11 p.m. Mikey then asked his dad for a lift to his girlfriend's house and his dad agreed. His dad watched and waited as Mikey packed a bag of snacks from the kitchen. Suddenly, the mm. pair were startled by two loud bangs. These turned out to be gunshots through the window and Mikey quickly fell backwards. It became apparent that Mikey had been shot. 
His dad started chest compressions while Josh rang 999. Soon armed police entered the house and Mikey was taken to hospital but tragically was pronounced dead shortly after. Mm. Within hours, rumours were circulating on social media that Pip and Worm were responsible. These were nicknames of the oh. Foy brothers, Michael and James. They were known to be involved in gangs and substances. Now, 53 minutes prior to Mikey's killing, a police officer was in the local area and noticed two people on a scramble bike. Suspecting that this meant trouble, the officer called for backup, but she then noticed a house with a broken window. This was the house of the Foy brothers and their mum, Joyce. It transpired that somebody had thrown bricks through the window and one brick had narrowly missed Joyce's head. Police started to collect CCTV evidence of the bike that had been spotted in the area and they found the bike on CCTV around the same area and time of Mikey's killing. Mm. Police then got a search warrant for the Foy's property and found nothing. Strangely, James, Michael and Mother Joyce all apparently lost their phones the day after the murder. Despite this, police were able to use mobile phone data to pinpoint the brothers' movements on the night. A Snapchat video was uncovered featuring an electric bike similar to the ones that the brothers owned from an account linked to James. Mm. This was the Snapchat image with the following text. Minutes later, Mikey was killed. There was no evidence that the bricks through the window had anything to do with Mikey Rainsford. By all accounts, he never got involved in any gangs or trouble or substances. The Foy brothers' mm. mum was charged with perverting the course of justice. She was accused of disposing of her SIM card and was jailed for two and a half years. Michael Foy was found guilty of murder and got life in prison with a minimum of 30 years. James was found guilty of murder and possession of a firearm and got a minimum of 28 years. Their uncle Craig Johnson and a neighbour were found guilty of perverting the course of justice after getting involved in the aftermath. So this is just moments before ah, this woman is executed dreams. and you will never guess what her last words were. Welsh Wong was an aspiring 22 year old nurse who worked, oh, my cat's always got to ruin it, who worked mm. part time at a local hospital. Dr. Feng Wei Zhao was essentially the boss of the hospital, he was in charge of everything, in charge of the staff and basically ran the show. I couldn't find an image of him online so let's just imagine him. So Dr. Feng and Guo Zhang got along really well, they had a really good relationship and he ended up inviting her to his birthday party. Not long after arriving at the party, she realized that something was very wrong. Mm. She started feeling really dizzy, really lightheaded, tired, which was concerning because she hadn't drank any alcohol at this party. Dr. Fung basically laughed it off with all the co-workers that were there saying that, oh, she's just had a bit too much to drink. She's a young girl, blah, blah, blah. Like, oh, she can't hold her liquor. And basically told everyone that he was just gonna take her home. And I think we all can assume what happened after that. Wow Shuang woke up the next morning in his bed with no recollection of the night before. So essentially what happened is Dr. Fung started bribing her, saying like, oh look, if you don't tell anybody, then I can make you a more regular position at the hospital. I can give you a full-time position, you know, blah, 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 bribing her, right? And she was so scared, she was sobbing, she was really upset at what happened. And so in her fear and her trauma, she accepted. So they made their arrangement a more regular event mm. in order for her to get this full-time role at the hospital. And look, she needed it. She needed the money. She was supporting her family and she needed that position. She needed the work. Not long after this whole ordeal, Guo Shuang started dating 18-year-old Wang Zujin. And just mind you, she is 23 at this point in time, okay? It was a really sticky kind of situation because she was still seeing Dr. Fang and she actually got pregnant with Dr. Fang's baby at this point in time. She mm. told Dr. Fang that and he was livid to say the least. I think he actually dragged her around the room once, once she told him because she, he just wanted to get rid of the baby like there and then. So that's really horrific stuff. Wow Shuang of course told her new boyfriend about what had just happened and how she was pregnant with his baby, Dr. Fang's baby. And essentially the pair came up with this plan <sighs> to kill Dr. Fang. Go to part two. These part twos are killing me seekers, man. I got a final for you guys, man. I know y'all sit saying there's like a freaking cliffhanger. I'm going to final for you guys, bro, so we can finish those out. 
it seems like she was in a freaking bad situation as well, but she came up with the, with the unthinkable, and I guess we all know what happened, bro. Her and her boyfriend, they teamed up, and I'm guessing they decided that to end it all. Crazy case seekers, man. Seekers, if you guys stay with me to the end of the video, you're a real one seeking the truth. So I really appreciate the support, man. Like I said, guys, subscribe to the channel. Hit that post notification bell. Also, hit that like button, man, so we can grow. We can expand the seekers, man. We can expand our community. That's what I want us to do so we can just build a bigger and better community. we all seeking the truth, so let's grow together. Also, man, follow me on my social medias down below, man. I haven't missed a day of uploading this month. I don't plan to. You guys can catch it in the next one, man. I'm out. Peace, Seekers. What's up, YouTube? Welcome back, Seekers, man. You guys already know what we do here on this channel, man. But if you don't, we break down scary room creepy videos, man, on the net, on the web, from YouTube videos to TikTok videos to IG videos, anything weird, usual, and explained, you can find right here on this channel. Um, like I said, I just want to thank you, Seekers, man, who's been tapping in with us, man, and who's been summing up to the channel. I appreciate that, man. Like I said, we seeking the truth just like you. Found this video for you guys today, man. Let's check it out. Woman sold her baby to six predators who viciously abused her and then ended that baby's life, possibly with a baseball bat. I just got this story because I was tagging it to the paranormal file. Tag below. Go follow this person. Gosh, amazing hair. But underneath that hair is a heart of gold. This woman, this monster, um, possibly will get the uh, the D penalty. Mm -hmm. They might end her because she sold her baby to predators who used and abused her. This is the baby. And it might be more than just six people that used this baby. That baby was innocent. That baby knew no evil except for that baby's mother. Mm -hmm. The mother was a drug addict and sold the baby for drug money. What do you guys think about this? And go follow the paranormal files. I think we all can agree that Harambe. I'll be telling our fellow seekers, man. Freaking money. Well, I was, I was saying it, man, just to see I could get that message, man. Money's the root of all evil, but to hear that she sold her baby to freaking six freaking evil human beings, bro. And now look what she's facing, man. The, the, that penalty, bro. It was so horrific, man, that they didn't have, I guess, the project. They didn't feel they had any other choice, man. I'm telling you guys, watch out for money, bro. The things people would do for money, bro, it's truly scary getting turned into a screensaver has done irreversible damage to our timeline but let's mm -hmm. talk about the gorilla before harambe because this happened before except it had a very different ending so this was actually 30 years before harambe became a hashtag in 1986 five-year-old levin Mayer was oh. visiting the jersey zoo which actually isn't in new jersey with his family when he tried leaning over to get a better look and instead air dropped himself 20 feet straight into the gorilla pen it really always is gorillas ain't it you never hear about this happening with chimps damn probably a a good reason for that. Levin broke his arm, cracked his skull, and knocked himself out cold. But worst of all, when he woke up, it was to a 400-pound silverback looming over him, and everyone watching thought the kid was about to get put back to sleep permanently. Instead, what they actually saw was 25-year-old Jumbo standing over the boy, gently stroking his back with his hand, and even keeping the other curious gorillas away from him. And when the kid started screaming, because honestly, who wouldn't? Jumbo took charge and led all the others away from the boy into a small hut in their enclosure, which is when paramedics were able to retrieve the boy. And the funny thing is, Jumbo's actions might have saved more than just the little boy. Back then, King Kong was to gorillas what Jaws did to sharks, and the general public wasn't rocking with gorillas. But seeing a 400-pound unit protecting a human child, it was like Jumbo hit everyone with the Uno reverse, and it helped change public perception of gorillas. Hmm. As for Levin, that day and Jumbo changed his life forever, and he still has the toy gorilla the zoo gave him. And as for gentle giant Jumbo, he passed tense in 92, but all that really means is he was there to welcome Harambe 24 years later. The more you know. Creepy facts that will give you- Wow, what the hell? I never even knew that, man, because I remember yeah, when that Harambe hashtag, people, when that freaking little boy fell in there, that they had a freaking in Harambe's life, man, but never to know, like, the exact opposite happened just, like, a freaking earlier, bro. It's like it's a yin, a yin and a yang, bro. It's like, you are just good, man. That's actually crazy if you think about the secrets. That happened with Harambe, but there was another one where he was actually protecting that little boy. Really neat, bro.
Back and forth, man. 99% of you chills, part two. More people die every year from taking selfies than are killed in shark attacks. So next time you are taking a selfie, be aware of your surroundings and be careful. Refrigerator doors are magnetic because children used to die inside them while playing hide and seek. These older model refrigerators could only be opened from the outside. So when the children hid in them and shut the door, there was no way of them getting out and they died. The reason why dogs love squeaky toys so much, because it triggers an ancestral instinct that reminds them of a whimpering prey. So next time you see your dog chewing on a squeaky toy, it actually thinks it's chewing on a dying animal crying for its life. People who spend more than two hours a day in front of a screen actually make their lives 1.4 years shorter. So I think some of us have to get off our phones for a little bit. That ass one, bro. Really? Yeah. Oh man, they don't. I guess that's why you don't want to be freaking staring at screens a couple of days, bro. I guess it's poor, man. It makes your freaking life shorter, bro. And the thing about how he said when you're taking selfies, man, that actually more people pass away from that than actual shark attacks, bro. That's actually a scary one, too, man, because that's saying, like, a lot about people not paying attention to their freaking surroundings, bro. You always have to do that, man. When I'm out, I don't even like to wear headphones because I want to be aware. I want to know what's going on all Speaking around me, bro. I'm not trying to get cut off off guard off off of nothing, man. So that's kind of crazy to think about, man. But yeah, I'd be more aware of seekers. Edit. I gotta call it like I see it. I've seen this too many times. That's an edit. It is now being reported that one of the largest data leaks ever discovered has occurred. So here's how to check if you've been affected. Yesterday, researchers found that a massive 26 billion personal records had been exposed in what they called the mother of all breaches. With Zuck commenting, <laughs> rookie numbers. This is the list of the companies affected, which include the likes of Twitter, LinkedIn, Dropbox, MyFitnessPal, Adobe, Canva, and the list goes on. The researchers claim that this breach is extremely dangerous and could prompt a tsunami of cybercrime, including identity theft and unauthorized access to your personal and sensitive accounts. Now, regardless if you care about any of these accounts listed, mm -hmm. usernames and password combinations were found in the leak. So if you're using these same ones elsewhere, you are being advised to change them and use two-factor authentication. Normal looking photos that have a dis what the hell you know what's the most disturbing part about that freaking story was there was like i'm mean, gonna see you if you look up in the news no news is this probably how this is even reporting about that massive data leak bro that makes me wonder how many times has that actually happened man and our freaking in it our freaking information just floating on the net and these cyber thieves they can just access it like that bro but the freaking public we're not even aware of that seekers man what do you guys think about that Comment down below, man. I know you guys have some thoughts on that. Disturbing Backstory, Part 21. This is known as the Pale Blue Dot. This picture is a Voyager 1 photo, and the blue dot is Earth. On that tiny dot is everyone you've ever loved, and every person that's ever lived. This photo was taken of Virginia K by her killer. He was a truck driver who would pick up prostitutes, runaways, and hitchhikers, and he would rape, torture, and sometimes kill them. While this appears to be an ordinary group of friends having fun, it is actually a group of Nazi concentration camp officers at Auschwitz. The man on the left is Edmund Kemper, a 6'9 serial killer who murdered over 10 people. The man on the right is interviewing him. After the interview was finished, he clicked the panic button under the desk, but the guards didn't respond. Kemper noticed his panic and said, If I wanted, I could screw your head off and place it on the table to greet the guards. They entered the room 30 minutes later. 30 what the hell? That one sent freaking chills down my damn spine, bro. He hit the panic button and 30 minutes later, what? Everybody in that freaking response team, bro, has to get freaking fired, bro. What the hell? Why did it take him that long, man? And nothing even happened to him, so I guess what he said was true. If he really wanted to take him out, man, he could have taken him out. He chose not to, bro. People, man, freaking even disturbing, bro. What the hell? My Barbie is 300 years old, and she's alive. Every toy on the planet is alive. Your toys are sleeping, and they can awake at any moment. Look at your toys and eyes and tell me if it blinks. Whoa. That was scary. It's okay, man. I'm gonna 
have to call probably edit on our video. Do you know what would happen if the Earth lost oxygen for five seconds? Now, most humans and animals can hold their breath for that long, so initially your body probably wouldn't even notice, but you would notice it when the sky goes completely black, due to the atmosphere having no oxygen to scatter the rays of light from the sun. Any form of transportation that relies on combustion would immediately stop working, causing planes to fall from the sky and millions of cars to stop working. The ozone layer would also be gone, causing everyone and everything to start the cooking process. While that's happening, your eardrums would also explode due to the change in atmospheric pressure. Anything made out of concrete, including buildings, bridges, and dams, would immediately collapse. And since the Earth's crust is made out of 45% oxygen, it would also completely collapse, and everyone and everything would immediately start falling towards the center. This case is gonna give you chills. Welcome. Whoa. Well, I mean, he freaking really wouldn't have death if the freaking, if the world didn't have oxygen for five seconds like when out first, so you didn't think nothing bad would happen, but if you freaking... Think about it, it's like a lot of things, man, freaking uses oxygen or something like that. Or the, the freaking, like you said, the layer will freaking disappear. There'll just be madness and destruction all around, bro. It's, it's the simple things we don't even freaking think about that we take for granted, man, that really can affect our everyday lives, bro. Come to Creep Time on TikTok with Silas Dean. This story is from a man named Grady Hendrix about his childhood back in the 80s. So his parents had moved into this house around May of 1981. He's like any other nine-year-old kid. He realizes he can sneak downstairs in the middle of the night and grab anything he wants from the kitchen without his parents finding out. Until one night, while he's sneaking down in the dark, he hears something that makes him freeze. The sound of a fork hitting a counter in the kitchen. From the hallway, he can see the outline of a tall, thin man who had been eating at the kitchen counter. He races upstairs and he gets his parents up from their sleep, but of course by the time they go downstairs, there's nothing. But over the next couple of months, there's odd instances of strange noises in the house, there's things being misplaced in the kitchen. Over that summer, while he's lying awake in bed, he hears movements coming from the ceiling above him, so he flips over on his back. He recounts seeing a pair of eyes staring back at him from the ceiling bent. He becomes hysterical, his parents get up, they have to search the attic, they search all the crawl spaces, but still, they're not finding anything. They just keep assuming that he's freaked himself out. But by the end of that summer, an HVAC inspector comes to the house and finds something horrific. The rotting remains of a dead man who had crawled into their vent system and was living in their walls. I can't think of anything more chilling than that, but of course what this meant was that everything Grady had seen was real. Since I've heard this story, I, I can't look at the vents in my house. I'm so freaked out. You can imagine that, bro. A whole freaking man or person was living in your house, man, and your kid was trying to bore you about it. You just thought it was his imagination, man. I can't even freaking imagine that, bro. Now, like I said, I can't even look at the freaking bits or something the same, bro. I'm gonna think somebody in my damn house. That's crazy, man. The things that people can do, bro. Like, how did he, how could he stay in the house that long, man? They didn't really notice. Man, people need to be more aware, bro. Seekers, if that happened to you, man, tell me what you guys pick up on that, like, right away, man. Somebody was in your house. Creepy photos that can't be explained. This photo was taken in the basement of a house that was for sale a few years ago. The photo was taken by a realtor because he wanted to show his clients the house. Everything looks completely normal in this house mm -hmm. until you look at the left corner. What appears to be a fairly transparent woman is standing towards the bottom of the stairs going to the basement. The realtor insists that nobody was there when he took the photo, but the strangest part about this photo lies in the backstory of this house. The house was previously owned by a man and his wife, but unfortunately the wife passed away so the husband decided to sell. Another reason why the man wanted to sell his house is because after his wife passed, he kept hearing strange noises in the middle of the night while home alone. What do you guys think? Who or what was captured on camera? Like and follow. Videos that can never be explained. A police body cam Ready? captures lady vanishing out of nowhere. Hey, how's it going? I'm speeding, wasn't I? Yeah, you could clearly blew past that stop sign in front of me. I'm so sorry, I okay. literally didn't even see it. Right. Um, no this is my first time being pulled over. Right. Can I see your driver's license registration, please? Yeah. It's not a big deal. Here's my license, but uh, this is my mom's car, so... Where are you headed to where you're speeding and 
missing stop signs. I was just headed to a friend's house. It's like literally right there. It's a okay. birthday party. Uh, uh, not mine, but... Any drugs or alcohol in the vehicle? No. Okay. Alright. Sit tight, Sarah. I'll be right back. Okay. Your registration is just... Where did she what go? The... Sarah? Huh? What the heck? Sarah? 3201? Now, Sarah, no. Oh, the damn Batman. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, the garden of the willow tree and the prison bro freaking that changes you man especially that first photo man how the hell did he get all those damn tattoos in prison that's the freaking real question we need to be asking he had no face test or nothing man so when he got out it's like freaking face was covered in that bro how did he get them done it's really freaking bo my damn mind bro huh more questions we need to be asking, man. I need to freaking check up on that, bro. Do some more research. You always say they see something under the stairs. I don't see it. Okay, I think I saw a little shadow movement. But nothing too crazy. Animal facts that'll make you see the world a little differently. The only reason tigers are orange is because the animals on their grocery list are Helen Keller, so the color. So if you're something like a deer, this is what the biggest cat in the world and a striped uber to the afterlife looks like. Polar bears have black skin. The only reason they look white is because their fur is translucent and hollow. And with hollow hair, light bounces off of them and reflects enough to look like an aggressive piece of snowdrift. Flamingos are naturally pink. The color comes from the carotenoid pigments in the shrimp and algae they eat. If they didn't eat it, they'd look like an Ikea kitchen, just 50 shades of bland. If you move like Bugs Bunny and start ODing on carrots, the same thing can happen to you, but instead of pink, you turn a shade of orange. If you think an orca's eyes are here, you fall for their trap card. It's actually right there. The giant white patches are false eyes to trick any prey that tries to fight back. It's just devious. This is a black bear. Let me explain. This is a black bear with a mutation called leucism that basically turns it into a shiny Pokemon. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, all three of these are black bears, and I can't even be mad. I'm black and I'm proud, but I'm black and I'm brown, at least according to Crayola. Bulls hating the color red is a myth. <laughs> Mostly because bulls can't even see the color red, but chickens do it because their instinct is to attack the color red. You're more likely to get pressed by a pack of poultry if you cosplay as the Kool-Aid man. The more you know. Three scared. What? That bullfuck is freaking mind blowing, man. Because you know, in all the freaking TV shows, movies, man, that guy with the freaking, there was a guy with a red cape or something in front of the bull and makes it freaking angry. But to hear that they can't even freaking see. <laughs> I tell you, man, the stuff they put this media and stuff, man, we be watching, but would it be alive, man? You don't want us to know the freaking truth, bro. That's why I love freaking checking out these videos with you guys, man. Expanding my mind, and hopefully it expands you guys' minds as well. That's freaking crazy, bro. you rather get attacked by a chicken wearing red than a freaking bull, bro. Very facts about dreams. One, if you are dreaming and some weird creature appears in your dream, there is someone watching you. 2. Mm. If you are unable to fall asleep that means you are awake in someone else's dream. 3. 90% of your dream are actually traumas. Really? In 1995, 13-year-old Thad Phillips was sleeping when someone picked Phillips up off the couch. He assumed it was his father carrying him to bed. Thad soon found he was outside with an unfamiliar, friendly, older teen boy named Joe Clark. <laughs> Joe took Thad to his home, saying he needed some help with his car and that some other boys were coming over for a party. But once they got into Joe's house, Joe's friendly teen persona disappeared. He threw Thad on his bed and started jumping on him, and then began to twist Thad's foot around his leg until the bone above his ankle snapped and split him. Oh, For the next 43 hours, Thad would endure horrific torture, with many bones broken, including his Damn. knees. His ankles broken so bad that his feet were backwards. Thad asked Joe why he was doing this, and Joe said, I enjoy the sound and the feeling of bones breaking. I've done this before, and I love it. 
it was later discovered that he had abducted and tortured Christian Steiner that had initially thought to have drowned in the nearby river. Or movies based on truth. Did they freaking catch this sick individual, man? He said he loves to hear bones breaking, bro. He freaking got to this house, man. He freaking just scooped him up and just started freaking torturing him, bro. Man. People, bro. Said they get some, they get into weird things, bro, and it doesn't end well for anybody else, man. Ooh. Hopefully, man, they call them revenge. The strangers Seen him. I've seen that trailer before, so it's based on the real Jesus story. Never taken seriously in Hollywood. Like, why is he mocked almost everywhere? We got Jesus getting the lap dance on SNL. Megan Thee Stallion dressed as a demon. P. Diddy on a cross. Tupac on a cross. Mm. Madonna on a cross. Nas on a cross. The baby on a cross. Even Lil Dicky on a cross. We got Lady uh -huh. Gaga in a nun outfit with an upside down cross. Katy Perry pretending to be Birdie with a demon behind her. And an upside down cross. Look, what I'm trying to say is how did being demonic become so cool and popular? Have we lost our way that much? This is demonic. They're not even hiding the fact that they are the devil. This is a satanic dance and ritual. Uh -huh. Somehow this is meant to be the entertainment standard for our youth, for the world. This is promoting the pathway to hell. Like a lot of us are just sitting here shrugging it off. It's no big deal. But that isn't weird to you that we have normalized it that much? Whew. We have lost our way from God. If you still believe in good and still believe in God, comment amen down below. Because at this point, I'm afraid of what we'll start normalizing next. Make sure to hit that follow button because my next story will be I don't think this was a... It was saying like to pick a points, but like yeah, I think it has gotten to the point where the power like people just think it's normalized, they think it's just for entertainment, but I don't think that's something that you should be doing, man, because it, it to me it just won't end well, bro. It just affects a lot of people, man. You saw what happened with Lil Nas X, bro. And I don't have to speak on that, man, so just gotta do some more research into that. The picture that many people were supposed to see. And these things we we typically talk about them. This was the photo that I wanted to talk about. And unlike some of them, for this one, I could pretty much spot straight away what was wrong with the picture. Yeah, mm -hmm. this was a picture that nobody was ever supposed to see. We know it took place somewhere in the suburban neighborhood. In a quiet town, entire family vanished without a trace, but they searched the phones because those were oddly enough left behind on the phone of the mother. This was a picture that was found. And I'll tell you why it's so strange. Before we do, as always, if you have not listened to Creep Time the podcast go click the link in my bio to listen on spotify or apple like i said this picture taken by the mother right if you look to the back who is that mm. in this room According to this file that leaked this was a family of all boys a husband and the mother is this unexplained woman that's in their house nothing in their file to explain this person the hell were you? who was that she was the cause of it Has to be Edison. Y'all yeah, can see the freaking Edward above. In 2007, ABC News did a segment on death threats and the investigated families who had experienced that. Mm. Little did they know that this series was about to take a terrifying turn. One of the families they investigated claimed that they would receive calls late at night from a man with a scratchy voice. He threatened to unalive them, their parents, their pets, basically anyone that was related to the family. What terrifies me is the caller even knew what the family was wearing at the time of them receiving the call. Police tried to trace the phone numbers, however it would always be traced back to the people's phones. And during the segment, police actually found out that the person giving the death threats was actually a hacker and he was in their phone. He was tracking their location, what they were seeing and hearing, basically everything. They never found out who it was, and that truly goes to show that you never know who is listening. It's freaking scary, bro. Think about it, man. Like, so, if you can stalk and went to the next level, man. You heard of stalking before, but he knew, like, the location, what they was wearing, 
anything, so he could get them at any point in time, man, and they never freaking know. They had to be walking around probably scared for what, what would happen next to him, man. The things, bro, technology can allow you to do, bro. Somebody could be watching me right now, and I would never even know, bro. That's how freaking advanced the technology got, man. Mm. Scary, bro. How to tell if a zodiac sign likes you? Virgo. They're shy, but if you like them back, they won't shut up. Hmm. Aries. They're always glancing at you. Pisces. Ask you a lot of questions and tries to make you smile. Gemini. How don't you tell is the real question. Oh. Capricorn. They show off so freaking much. Scorpio. They're always staring at you when you're not looking. Hmm. Oh, okay. So, my harmonica. show with that did they even want that special during this Christmas or not man because you know people freaking they took Christmas they think it's just all about gift giving man but it's truly it's, it's more than that bro it's more about it's more than the gifts man it's about being with your family about being with I guess with the people you love bro Let's talk about another South Asian serial killer who claimed a whopping 100 lives. Javed Iqbal was a Pakistani serial killer who confessed to the murder and sexual abuse of 100 boys ages ranging from 6 to 16. When his father died in 1993, Javed inherited 3 million rupees. He used the money to open different businesses designed to meet young boys and teenagers. He'd lure his victims by leaving money on the floor of his video game arcade. Whenever a child would pick up the money, he would accuse them of theft and take them to a room where he would sexually assault them as their punishment for stealing. Javed also met other victims through pen pal programs. He'd convince them to send photos of themselves, select his favorites, and then he'd send them gifts. After that, he'd arrange to meet them and sexually assault them. He'd abduct his victims, assault them, and then strangle them to death. He'd then dismember the corpses of his victims and submerge them in vats of hydrochloric acid. After the bodies liquefy, he'd dump everything into a nearby river. In 1998, Javed and an employee were robbed and beaten by another employee. He suffered a severe head injury and was hospitalized for 22 days. Right after that, he was arrested and charged with sexual assault. Somehow, he was granted bail and most of his property was sold to cover his medical care. He moved out to the slums of Lahore where he would commit more heinous crimes. In 1999, Javed wrote a letter to the police and a local Lahore newspaper where he confessed to the murder of 100 boys. When the police got to his home, they were met with bloodstains, vats of acid containing partially dissolved bodies and plastic bags containing clothes and shoes of his victims. Note mm. cards with details and photos of his victims were also found, but Javed was gone. The police also found out he'd been sharing his home with three teenage boys who were believed to be his accomplices. On December 30th, 1999, Javed gave himself up. However, when it came time for him to stand trial, he denied any involvement in the killings. He claimed he confessed to the murders to draw attention to the dangerous children living in poverty experience. Thankfully, the judge didn't believe him, and he was sentenced to death by strangulation in the same public square he frequented when searching for victims. His mm. body was also to be cut into a hundred pieces. 
bases and dissolved in acid. His three accomplices were also found guilty. However, on October 8, 2001, he and one of his accomplices were found dead in her cell. It seems like they had committed suicide. However, there's speculation that they were murdered because autopsies revealed that they were beaten prior to their death. Javed's motive for these murders was his rage over a perceived injustice committed by the Lahore police. They beat him after arresting him on charges of sexual assault against a young runaway boy in the 1990s. Mm. Since his mother was forced to watch his decline due to these injuries before suffering a fatal heart attack while he was still incarcerated, he vowed to make a hundred mothers cry for their sons just as she had cried for him. Javed bragged to authorities that he could have easily killed 500 or more children. He stopped at a hundred because that's what he promised himself. Freaking even individual, bro. Freaking put all those freaking people in there for that freaking trauma, bro. Because you wanted to keep a promise to his mom, man. Whew. And the air that there was freaking other people involved in the man was like, damn, ring or something, bro. That's just freaking a bone chilling case, man. Truly. You never know, man. The things people would do, man, when they freaking. Hurt or broken or shattered, bro. They can truly do some evil things. YouTube, that's it, man, for this video for you guys today, man. Like I said, if you guys save me to the end of the video, you're a real seeker, man, seeking the truth, man. So I appreciate that. Like I said, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, man, so we can hit the algorithm more, so we can find more seekers, man, so we can grow our community together. I just want to, um, like I said, thank you guys for the support, and I've been seeing all you guys support the comments. I really appreciate that. Like I said, man, I'm kind of torn with the idea of doing, like, daily uploads in February. I don't know if you guys want me to do it or not. But tell me down below, man, if you guys want me to do it. Maybe I can try. But, um, yep. Yeah. You guys can catch in the next videos. I'm out. Peace, YouTube.